Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today I want to talk about the use of science in mental health counseling. Now it's not unusual that in the practice of counseling we look at research, perhaps watch videos, listen to lectures, and we hear people say that science says this about counseling or science says that about this particular modality of counseling or this particular disorder. And I want to talk a few minutes about what science is and how it relates to effective practice as a counselor. So when you hear the term science says, right away I think it's important to be skeptical because science doesn't say anything. Science refers to the use of the scientific method and the scientific method involves collecting data, performing experiments, seeing if you can perform experiments repeatedly and get the same or different results and draw conclusions from that. Science is really, when we, when we use the word science with counseling, we're really talking about a methodology. We're not talking about the body of research. We're not talking about the literature. And this is an area of confusion that I think is fairly common. There's this idea that there's an overarching scientific belief and we can either buy into it or not. And science says one thing, and we either believe what science says or we believe something else. It's not the case. Science produces evidence. And when you look at evidence and you draw conclusions and make decisions based on evidence, you're interpreting that evidence. And you can interpret evidence based on a lot of different criteria. We can use probability and statistics to decide how convincing, how supportive evidence is of some certain belief. We can look at how the evidence was created, how the analysis was performed on the data. What if the sample size in a particular study was small, or the research methodology was weak and had a lot of room for other variables to explain what happened? We have to take into account the data collection, the area that's being studied, the research method, the statistics that are applied to it, as well as any potential biases that we think might exist around the topic. So interpretation of research is difficult. It takes a lot of skill and a lot of time to consume an article, a scholarly article, and make a decision based on that. And really, the best method would be to read a number of articles on any particular mental health disorder or counseling treatment or set of techniques in order to decide what the true nature of that topic is, whether a therapy is effective or not, or whether a mental health disorder really does represent a distinct grouping of symptoms, or if it can be blurred with other mental health disorders and it's not clear. Or when we talk about etiology, what causes mental health disorders. There have been a lot of data collected on the causes of mental health disorders. There have been a lot of analyses, and we need to look at those results and try to figure out what causes mental health disorders. It's very difficult. There's no perfect answer when it comes to how to interpret these results, how to look at the evidence and draw the most logical conclusion. There's also degrees of risk when we talk about treatment. You can be looking at a disorder that has a massive effect on a person. It causes depression or anxiety, a decrease in functioning. And we can be looking at a therapeutic modality that we want to try with that disorder. And the evidence may be unclear when we look at it. We may look at the evidence and say, well, it may work or it may not. But if there are no other available options and it doesn't cause harm, we may consider using a modality if we believe it could be effective, even though we don't really have proof that it is. And that concept there, the idea of proof, also needs to be looked at skeptically. When we look at research, when we consider the scientific method, we're never 100% sure about anything. We never have proof that a modality works or proof that some particular stressor causes a mental health disorder or that genetics causes a particular disorder we are left instead with probabilities. So for a particular causal agent that we think may be leading to a mental health disorder, 
we could look at studies and say, well, it seems to, it's 80% likely that this could be the cause, or 50% likely. And now we're trying to use these probabilities to make treatment decisions. Again, this becomes difficult. So when looking at newer treatments, we have to consider what's available that might be better. And we have to look at the harm that it could cause. And we have to be generally, I believe, skeptical and try to bring as much logic to the interpretation as possible. Really, there's no simple answer, as I mentioned, to interpreting all this literature on all these disorders and treatments. We have to do our best and be responsible. And we have to keep in mind, we're trying to bring the best treatment possible to the client. And when we look at that best treatment, there are a lot of treatment options to pick from. And there's a lot of levels of mental health disorders to consider, a lot of factors. You also want to consider what your client wants to do. What kind of treatment do they want to receive? Are they willing to receive a treatment where the effectiveness level may not be known because other treatments where there's a higher level of effectiveness did not work for them? Science and research, evidence and our interpretation of evidence, these are foundational to what we do. And the use of science has greatly enhanced our ability to be confident that our treatments are effective most of the time for the most part. And this is certainly better in terms of the odds of helping somebody get better than if we didn't use science, than if we didn't use research, and we just did whatever seemed to work, just use common sense. Common sense can get you so far, but the use of science and research is the most reliable way, the most valid way to bring quality treatment to mental health counseling. I hope you found this description of science and mental health counseling to be interesting. Thanks for watching.